This is Peggy, and she is a Harris Hawk. Uh, a Harris's Hawk. Uh, a Harris's Buzzard? Um, a Bay Winged Hawk? Uh, a Desert Buzzard? Wait, what, what even is this bird? <laughs> Harris's hawks are a new world species of bird of prey, meaning they come from the Americas. Their range goes from as far north as the Gulf of California, down through Mexico, and then covering most of Southern America with the exception of the Amazon rainforest. And their name, the Harris's hawk, comes from John James Audubon, who wanted to name them after his friend and ornithologist, Edward Harris. But as a species, there are multiple alternatives to the name the Harris's hawk. There is also the bay-winged hawk, which is referencing that lovely sort of rusty colour that they have on their wings. And then the dusky hawk, which is referencing that sort of blacker, darker, smoky kind of colour on their body. They're also known as the wolf hawk, as they hunt and live in sort of packs. But over here in England, the more accurate name for them would be the Harris's buzzard. And over in some European countries, their name can be translated into the desert buzzard. So with all those names, that leaves the question, is this a buzzard or a hawk? Now there are multiple ways to classify an animal, especially with birds of prey. There is a scientific approach which looks at their genetics um, and the, the general sort of makeup of them. Um, in falconry, birds are classified based off the shape of their wing. And then before um, the rise of genetics, a lot of animals were classified just based off how they looked and appeared um, in comparison to other animals. In the Encyclopedia for Falconry, there is multiple different meanings for the word hawk. The first one listed um, is a general name often used by falconers for a bird of prey used in falconry. So perhaps they're called a Harris hawk um, in that kind of meaning, so it's just a bird of prey used in falconry. But then why don't I say, oh look at that lovely peregrine hawk, I'd get laughed at if I said that. And so this is where I find it gets a little bit contradictory with these words. So one of these entries is that the definition of a hawk is in the genus Accipiter. But then another entry talks about in Northern America, it's the genus Buteo, which is a buzzard. So. Does hawk mean occipiter or does hawk mean buteo? Perhaps the scientific name will give us some answers as to whether this is a hawk or a buzzard. So let's compare Peggy's scientific names to a common buzzard and a sparrow hawk. Now there are a few things that we can fill in that are the same for all of these species. They are all in the domain eukaryota, meaning they have a membrane-bound nucleus. They are all in the kingdom animalia, meaning they are animals. They are all in the phylum chordata, meaning they have bilateral symmetry and a body cavity. They are all in the class aves, because they are all birds. They are all in the order Accipitriformes, meaning they are a diurnal species of bird of prey. They are all in the family Accipitrade, which is one of the three Accipitriformes. And then we get to the genus. Now, the genus for a sparrow hawk, a true hawk, is Accipiter. The genus for a Eurasian or common buzzard, a true buzzard, is Buteo. But the genus for a Harris hawk is Parabuteo. So neither Accipiter nor Buteo. So we can break some of these words down and sort of look at some rough translations, um, but none of this is really definitive, they're kind of just sort of theories. Um, and so Occipita um, roughly translates in to grasp, which comes from a Greek word, whereas Buteo is thought of to have come from uh, an imitation of a buzzard or a hawk's call. The word para in Latin kind of means adjacent to or like, so para Buteo can be roughly translated into like a buzzard. Now if you wanted to get really scientific about it, there is some changes in the anatomy that we can look at. So one thing that distinguishes a Harris hawk from the rest of the Accipita genus is the fact that Accipitas, true Accipitas, true hawks, lack a prochoracoidal foramen, 
which is a small hole in one of the bones up sort of around here, around your clavicles, it's called a coracoid bone. Humans don't have one, but birds do. And this little hole allows a supracoracoideous nerve to pass through. So if occipitors lack this foramen, but the Harris hawks contain it, then surely they're not a true hawk. So science seems to think that she is closely related to a buzzard, but what does falconry think? In falconry, birds are classified based off the shape of their wing. True hawks are classed as short wings because they're a woodland species. So they live and hunt in the woods. If you're living and hunting and flying through all the woods and trees and shrubs, it's no use having great big massive long wings or broad wings because you're just going to whack them on everything you fly past. So the true hawks have got nice, short, rounded wings. And then they also have a really long tail because that's what acts as a big rudder to help steer them around so they can be really nice and agile. The buzzards in falconry are classed as broad wings because they are a soaring and gliding species of bird of prey. So we often see them circling high up in the air. So they've got this really big, broad wing and an incredibly fanned out tail. And it's all to increase their surface area to help use those thermals and environmental lift to push them nice and high up in the air. So where do Harris hawks fit into this? Now, Harris hawks are a really strange shaped bird. They're kind of like a mix between both a buzzard and a hawk. So Peggy, as she flies over to me, she's got very broad wings. She's got a really fanned out tail. And these are all buzzard features, which allows her to get up in the air and soar around. But for a buzzard, she also has quite rounded edges to her wings, rather than the buzzard's natural wing coming to a bit of a point, almost like a, a broader falcon. The Harris hawk's wings are nice round edges. And then she also has an incredibly long tail for a buzzard. And so these rounder wings and the really long tail, they're actually more hawk features rather than buzzard features. And so that makes the Harris Hawks an incredibly versatile flying bird of prey because they can fly in both styles. They can fly just like a buzzard, up in the air, soaring around, but they're also just as comfortable diving and darting in and out of all the bushes and trees and shrubs. Okay, so science says they are like a buzzard. Falconry classifications based off the shape of the wings and tail doesn't really tell us much. How about the way that they fly? So let's quickly go back to their scientific name, as we've already broken down para and butio like a buzzard. But then there's the unisynctus part. Now uni, meaning one, cinctus roughly meaning banded, is talking about that lovely white stripe that they have along the bottom of their tail. And it's hard to film, but every now and then, Peggy turns around and shakes her tail at me. And so the reason she does that is because that is how Harris hawks communicate with other Harris hawks. So let's add on another strange thing about Harris hawks. They are a social species. Most birds of prey tend to be solitary animals. Usually they'll only ever come together one around the breeding season and then they'll go their separate ways and they'll spend most of the time as a solitary animal. But Harris hawks live and hunt in big family groups. And so to find out how they fly, the best thing to do is to look at how they hunt. And so that's quite different being a social group and hunting than a solitary bird of prey that's hunting. So how do they hunt? How do they fly? Now, looking back at the falconry classification based off the shape of them, we know that they have the shape of both a buzzard and a hawk, and so they take advantage of that whilst they are hunting. As they are a social species, they have a natural hierarchy, like most social animals do. Females being up to 40% or a third larger means that they will have an alpha female up at the top, and so the alpha female and all the other larger females will use their buzzard features, those really broad wings, that really fanned out tail to increase their surface area and help push them nice and high so they can soar around. Now whilst the females are up in the air and soaring around, all of these smaller males lower down on the hierarchy, they use the more hawk-like features, so the rounder wings and that really long tail to go diving and darting in and out of the trees and the bushes and the shrubs. 
And so what that does is that flushes all of the prey out into the open. Once the prey is out in the open, the larger females are already in the air, they can just go straight down and make the kill. So why do they have the white stripe? And how is that used for communication? So if they roll out as hunting as part of a group, they need to be able to communicate. And if they did that vocally, they'd never catch anything because everything will just hear where they all are. So they shake that tail, flash off that lovely white stripe to each other as a silent way of saying, look, I'm in position and ready. So it's an incredibly intelligent way of hunting for a bird of prey, but it still doesn't really answer our question. They're flying like a buzzard, but they're also flying like a hawk. Hmm. So the only other thing that we could look at to distinguish whether a Harris hawk is a hawk or a buzzard is going all the way back to kind of ye olde times before there was all this genetic information um, and just animals were sort of just compared with each other and animals that sort of matched in ways were paired up um, as sort of species um, and families and orders. And so if you look at a Harris hawk and you compare it to something like a common buzzard or a Eurasian sparrow hawk, I think it's quite obvious that Harris hawks very much look a lot more like a buzzard. Just the general shape of their face, size of their beak and their gape, they're very different to a true hawk and they just look so much more like a buzzard. And I think when it comes down to it really, this issue with is a Harris hawk a hawk or a buzzard is not really an issue. I think we all know a Harris hawk is a buzzard. The problem is that Americans refer to all of their beautyos as hawks and so that is where things get confusing. So should we change the birds names? Perhaps that's a question for a different video, but I don't know, let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below. So I do think that they are a buzzard. I think the scientific evidence supports that they are a buzzard. They're generally a bit more of a buzzard shape and proportions, um, and they do very much fly like buzzards. Um, they just have these extra features that make them a bit more adapted um, to a wider set of circumstances than many other buzzards that are often um, soaring and gliding scavengers. Um, so, I do think that they are a buzzard, but I guess they are kind of really just their own thing, which is why they've got their very own scientific name. If you've enjoyed this video, or if you have your own thoughts on Harris's, whatever they are, um, then please do leave it as a comment below. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what everybody else thinks about this species. Um, please make sure to subscribe consider becoming a member um, and thank you very much for watching. Hey, hey, hey.